Okay, that is one minute. Thank you, Jose, for the timing. Now I would like to welcome our next featured speaker. She is no stranger to you. And she is somebody who is actually, you know, when I was in, um, fe in February of 2020, she was one of our contestants in um, our um, Area 26 uh, area contest. And it's like her speech just like, you know, lifted me up and she's one of the most inspirational speakers. Linda Patton has, um, as you will know, has taken on a more, um, I think more, um, not, I'm not saying that our roles are not important, but it's a more challenging role. And she is currently our District 57 Finance Officer. And on the professional side, Linda has uh, won many awards. However, she's also a winner of the outstanding, she received an outstanding award in Toastmasters. Linda will inspire us today and talk to us about her speech, which is, where have all the mentors gone? Ladies and gentlemen, let us put our hands together and welcome Linda Patton. Where have all the mentors gone? Where have all the mentors gone? Linda Patton. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. I am delighted to be here on your 35th anniversary. And where are they? Where are they? I can't see them. They're not here. They're not there. They're not down. They're not up. Where are all those mentors? I don't see them. You may remember in this, I believe it was in the 60s, the wonderful song Pete Seeger did. And I'm going to adapt it a bit. Where have all the mentors gone? Long time passing. Where have all the mentors gone? Long time ago. Where have all the mentors gone? Mentees have picked them, every one. When will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? Why do I say where have all the mentors gone? Because I look at the class of millennials that we have in Toastmasters, that I have in my business, and 62% of them say, my leadership skills are not being utilized. I don't know where to turn to understand what my succession plan might look like. And this is a crime. We have some of the best and brightest people working with us, especially in this pandemic and we're not utilizing them. We're pushing them off to the side. We're pushing them out of positions. I can tell you my two daughters have both been laid off, one from the Mandalay Bay Hotel in Las Vegas, the other from Nationwide Insurance in Columbus, Ohio. Big companies. You would think your job was relatively safe. Obviously, being in a casino, when it's closed, there's no work. But I also ask them, are you looking for other work? Where are you looking for work? And the answer was, I don't know what to look for, mom. I've always done what I've always done. And I don't know what else I could possibly do. So for my daughter in Columbus, she's interviewing for administrator jobs. And she's extremely good at it. She's worked at the senior levels, but there are also 500 other administrators who are going for those same jobs. What do you think her chances are of getting one? Oh, and let's just add this to, to it. She's giving birth to a baby in December. So she looks, she's really great for doing face-to-face -face interviews. When I was in corporate, I ensured that I had a succession plan for every one of my employees. They knew what their next job could be, where they were being groomed for, and how they were going to get there. And I did that because I didn't want them to be hanging out there going, I don't know where to go. I guess I'll leave the company. When there were fantastic positions for them to achieve and to go for 
you know, as, as their uh, experience allowed them. I also found that I had mentors. Now, the challenge with me having mentors at my age was the fact that they were all men. And this is not a, a, a dish against the men, but the senior leaders that I knew in the organization or in the military for that matter, were primarily males. What I really loved though, was because there was still a Women's Army Corps when I was in the military, I had great female mentors, but only when I was stationed at one fort, and that was Fort McClellan, because there was Army Corps. So with a huge fort, and what next? What should I do next? I personally love a formal mentoring agreement. A Toastmasters has a fantastic mentoring program, both for individuals to mentor new people who have never spoken or they're relatively new. Maybe they've finished the first level of Pathways, but not all of Pathways. And they're wondering, where should I go, go next? What path should I do next? And that kind of thing. And it's fabulous to have a mentor say, you're doing well. Here's what I think you might want to improve on. Here's what I think you can uh, really enhance in your presentations. I love our evaluations for that. But when a mentor tells you that, it's really, really, really special. So I say to you all, who are you mentoring? Who in your club could you be bringing along and helping them to create those phenomenal speeches that we know are bottled up inside? And we also know that a mentor contract is not forever. A mentor contract is designed to meet a certain need with the mentee and the mentor for that matter. I learned so much from the people that I mentor and I know you can too. When you sit down with a prospective mentee, find out what are they looking for and why did they choose you? What did they think that you brought to their speaking ability and how can you assist them? Being a mentor is a very, very special position. And I have to tell you, I'm now a mentor of a club, which is a whole different animal that you need to deal with. And for me, having been individual mentors and, and being team mentors and this kind of thing, it's very interesting as to what, do you, what role do you play as a mentor there? My, I, I have memorialized my mentors in things that I have around my office. I have plaques. I have uh, certificates with their names on them because I valued their experience so very, very much. I have to say that even though we don't have a formal arrangement, Ashley has been a tremendous mentor to me. I encourage you, my call to action to you is go out. One, find a mentee, someone you can support on their journey. And two, for yourself, find an experienced Toastmaster and ask them to mentor you. Let's not continue the where have all the mentors gone. Madam Toastmaster. Great speech. Thank you so much, Linda. I think mentoring makes a whole lot of difference both to the mentee and the mentors as well. So I would like to give the evaluator a minute um, in order to write highlights of their, um, of Linda's uh, speech. So let's take, a, let's be silent and take a minute and pause and for the evaluation notes. Thank you. <laughs> 